It's the beating heart of the art market here in France for one weekend every year. A cornucopia of contemporary creation where you can invest in a future masterpiece or bag a bargain from an up-and-coming artist. The FIAC is showing work from some 200 galleries from 29 different countries and it's the 46th time the fair is being held here in Paris. Visitors are flooding through these doors to buy and sell artwork or simply to soak up the atmosphere and get a bit of inspiration. For me, FIAC is like, oh my God. One of the best art fairs in the world. So many great pieces of work, it's very inspiring. We came from, here, from Los Angeles and it's uh, pretty exciting uh, just to see, I mean, in a place like the Grand Palais. French are a more receptive audience to ideas that are a little less mainstream. Well, to tell us more about what it's like to be showing work here at the Grand Palais, I'm joined by Hormoz Hemastan of the Dastan Gallery in Tehran. Hi, Hi Hormoz, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, this is the first time an Iranian gallery is being represented at the FIAC. Uh, Iranian institutions and artists are not usually so present on the European scene. So for you, what does your presence here represent for the contemporary art scene in your country? Um, well, I'm very glad to be here. Um, it's fantastic to be among some of the leading galleries in the world in such a fantastic venue, which is the Grand Palais and Paris. Um, I'm surprised that there hasn't been more representation. Uh, obviously, there are many institutions who have looked in depth uh, at the Iranian art scene, including the exhibition at Musée d'Art Moderne called Iran uh, Unedited History. But uh, as a gallery, I'm just thrilled. And you're showcasing the work of painter and illustrator Ardashir Mohassas on your stand. Now, he was working in the second part of the 20th century into the 21st century before his death in 2008. And the work on show is work that he made while living in Iran. He was a political, satirical artist. How was he seen in Iran? Well, he's seen as uh, very, very influential. Um, at the time, there were many people who actually considered his work to be mostly illustration, but uh, he was also widely recognized for his extreme insight and his distinctive style of execution in drawing. So um, to this day, you will find artists who are uh, taking inspiration from his work, making references to his work, and uh, in a way executing their works in a manner of Adashi Moasas, like he was doing so in a manner of many people before him. And he moved to the United States, worked there. I believe he also spent time in Paris, too. How did that international experience influence his work? A uh, very interesting story, actually. One of, the, uh, one of the reasons that I'm very thrilled to be in Paris and showing Moises is that um, while he was in Paris, he, uh, in an interview, he says that um, he wanted to introduce color to his work. He said the way that every Parisian person dressed uh, allowed him and made him want to use color pencil. So a lot of the works that you will see at the stand reflect that. Now, Mahasas was someone who had an eye for the absurdities of modern life, but also some of the brutalities of the political circumstances. If you had to choose a piece of work of his that really sums up his attitude or his style, what would you highlight? Um, I would say while every piece by Yarda Shirma says is very, very important, uh, it's a body of work that really tells the full story. So at the stand you will see uh, three se uh, several series of work, but three particular series. Uh, one called um, the Vagoyet uh, Fourier, which are the daily happenings. And uh, it shows a country at, at the top of its uh, wealth and modernity. It's, uh, it, done in a style of a Hello magazine. It's showing starlets, it's showing uh, every, everything that you would imagine from an opulent uh, society. But at the same time, within a year of that, he executes a series called ID Card, where it shows extreme tyrannical acts by uh, cartoonish characters, people doing uh, basically a lot of uh, heinous crimes in a way that you can just see uh, that these are very violent. And later on, to show how these two uh, were in a way uh, in conflict, he does another series called Ardashir and Stormy Weather, relating to a time when um, the climate of the country had become uh, stormy in a way, uh, which refers to the constitutional revolution. He uses a lot of imagery from that series 
and uh, it could be imagined, as it is said by many people in the literature uh, who cared about Ardashir, that these series are in a, in a way prophesizing uh, the future to come, which is the 1979 revolution. And given the uh, geopolitical context in Iran, when it comes to selling and exporting work as a gallery, what sort of uh, financial, logistical or diplomatic obstacles do you encounter when doing business? Yeah. I mean, uh, Iran is going through some very interesting times, as uh, you can imagine, with everything. And we're not exempt uh, from all of that. But uh, luckily, the uh, you know, art and thoughts and ideas are not things that uh, get sanctioned very much. And it's very nice that the art world uh, recognizes that. Obviously, Ardashir lived in many places. His collectors lived in many, many places. So not, not everything is dependent on, uh, on dependent and will take place uh, from Iran. Now, Dastan is a relatively young gallery established in 2012. Um, can you tell me a bit more about uh, how you make your choices when it comes to selecting the artists you choose to represent? Uh, we've been very lucky to be advised by uh, very good friends of the gallery and advisors, including the curator of this exhibition, Mr. Feridun Av, uh, who actually resides in Paris. And uh, usually we take their advice, um, and from there, the artists join a very uh, subtle network uh, in a way that their works uh, kind of relate to one another. And um, that's the best way to go about it, in our opinion, so that you can show uh, relationship between the works that we are representing and the thoughts that we are showing. Thank you very much, Hormoz, and have a great fair. Thank you so much for having me again. Well, Iran is not the only country to be making its debut at the FIAC. This year, Ivory Coast is being represented for the first time, thanks to the Cecile Fakouri Gallery. Originally based in Abidjan, last year it branched out to Paris and Dakar as the African art market has grown and matured. And with ever more artists, dealers and collectors from the continent present at events like the FIAC, our reporter Julien Sauvager went to get the inside track on the African contemporary art scene. At this year's FIAC, creativity comes in a bottle for Nigerian artist Amika Agbo. It's his first time showing work at Paris's International Art Fair, and he had a special beer brewed for the occasion. Probably the best way to do this kind of introduction, which is not just art, visual stuff that you cannot touch, but now we're bringing taste, what you can taste, what you can touch, what you can hear, what you can feel, you know? So because the beer, you take it down, you feel something inside you. So it's a whole world of all the senses that are inspired by Africa, that are also inspired by being African in uh, Europe, that's also inspired by being in France. Artists from Sub-Saharan Africa, represented for the first time this year at FIAC, have been at work for decades, waiting to be recognized by the international art community. Now they're finally getting that recognition and gaining new visibility. We're seeing more articles in the press, museum donations, and great exhibitions of African art. We're telling ourselves this is something different, and they're creating something unique. We won't stop working to gain more visibility, and I think FIAC is doing the logical thing. I did the Armory show, so it's just the logical next step. They are artists whose work is finally being valued by the international market, thanks to the work of galleries on the African continent. This is a long-term effort, and I think it's the beginning of a story. I don't see this as a full recognition, but as the first step. And the goal is to continue and to maintain the quality of the work. Because the work of the artist is there, it exists, and it is up to us to value it and see it for what it's worth. For African artists, it's not enough to conquer the international market. They also have to raise interest in the local markets at home, offering an environment on the continent where artists can thrive. African art might be making a splash at this year's FIAC, but one region that is remarkable by its absence is Asia. And that's because galleries from Kazakhstan to South Korea have set up shop just a stone's throw away from the Grand Palais at the Asia Now Art Fair. Originally a fringe event, it's fast becoming an institution, with 55 galleries showing at this the fifth edition of the fair. 
Well, we spoke to its director, Alexandre Fin, who told us about the theme of this year's event. For her fifth edition, we had the chance to work with Chuai Chenovel, curator at Guggenheim New York, who created for us a platform dedicated to digital natives and a way in which younger generations look at the world, most notably with virtual reality, installations and videos. Finally, for those who prefer to take their dose of contemporary art in the fresh air, the FIAC has a rich selection of events, performances and installations beyond the glass roof of the Grand Palais. Whether it's Yayoi Kusama's polka dot pumpkin in the Place Vendôme or a mysterious woodland cabin in the Place de la Concorde, artwork has taken over the streets of the French capital this week. We'll leave you with a glimpse of what's on show in the Tuileries Gardens. Well, that's all from us for this show, but do join us on Encore for more arts and culture next time. That's here on France 24.